Ok, bienvenue dans notre émission euh, African Verity Show pour cette année nouvelle parce que nous sommes au mois de janvier et nous disons bonne année à tout le monde, Happy New Year. Et moi, Kamoupi en Swahili, Mboula est là, moi en Lingala, tu es un peu tu es mis salimi en Swahili à Bari, Mouzouri. Et bonjour tout le monde, et nous sommes en forme et nous disons merci à Dieu qui nous a permis à ce que nous puissions nous retrouver pour uh, cette année nouvelle. Alors, il uh, y a de très bonnes choses pour cette année qui commence uh, avec notre émission uh, African Verity Show. Et sur ce plateau, j'ai deux personnes que vous allez uh, découvrir, qu'elles sont avec moi. Et vous allez le découvrir tantôt, c'est vraiment très très important, parce que nous allons développer uh, un thème qui va nous permettre de comprendre uh, les concepts, qu'est-ce que le panafricanisme Et comme nous le savons bien, il se prépare un congrès au mois d'octobre euh, au Togo, le 9e congrès sur le panafricanisme. C'est quoi d'abord Parce qu'il y a beaucoup de gens qui entendent ce mal le mot panafricanisme. Alors, euh, en quelques lignes, le panafricanisme est un mouvement, euh, euh, une idéologie politique qui promet l'indépendance totale du continent africain et encourage la pratique de la solidarité entre les Africains et les personnes d'ascendance africaine, et qui soient dans le monde, partout où ils sont, indépendamment de leurs origines ethniques, et de leur appartenance religieuse ou leur apparence physique. Alors, si ce plateau, j'ai avec moi et Sandy Bird et aussi Robin euh, Lloyd, et elles vont se présenter. Et j'espère que vous parlez un peu de français. Je vous dis bonjour en français. Bonjour. Ça bonjour. va, vous allez bien? Oui, oui. Hey. Oui. Hey. So, can you introduce yourself, please? Sure. Yeah. Uh, je m'appelle Sandy Baird, um, but I will speak in English, if yeah. that's okay. Mm -hmm. I am a lawyer. I am a citizen activist. I am very interested in what is going on throughout the world, but primarily I'm very interested right now what's going on in Africa and many nations in Africa, and also the, the uh, arrival, in a way, of the new pan-African movement again, uh, and, and the fact that there's going to be a pan-African conference in Togo, as you said, in October, correct? Yes, yes no clue, right. Yeah. Anyway, that's me. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Sandy. Uh, Robin? Yes, uh, my name's Robin Lloyd. Uh, I've been he here in Burlington for decades. I'm uh, a peace activist. I'm, um, I was the president of TowardFreedom.com, which was uh, initially a newsletter, and then it was a website, and now it's, um, it's gone into uh, abeyance, um, and it's just... It's just me and uh, friends here in Burlington wanting to continue the heritage of the interest in Africa and African events and the Pan-African movement. OK. Euh, merci beaucoup. Euh, merci. Comme nous venons de les écouter, ce sont des activistes et ce sont des braves femmes qui s'intéressent beaucoup plus pour euh, tout ce qui se passe dans le monde, mais aussi ici et aux États-Unis. Euh, alors, euh, nous avons quelques questions à leur poser, parce que nous nous dirigeons euh, dans le vif sujet d'aujourd'hui. Euh, euh, what do you mean euh, pan-africanism to you? Pan-africanism, <coughs> to me, yes. and I've been trying to study more about it, is a movement to unite Africa, all the nations of Africa, and help in the decolonization of Africa. Uh, I think it, arri it arose um, as a result of the white European capitalist powers imperializing many of the nations of Africa. That was done largely between 1878 and 1914 when England and France primarily, but also Belgium, took over many of the African countries and began to extract from those countries resources. So the Pan-African movement, 
I, I believe, arose out of the struggle against the control of those white European powers of the African nations and w was really encouraging Africans to resist that control. However, it's, you know, it's complicated, I think, and it's not a history that is well known in the United States. And I've been attempting to study it and get a sense of what is going on because it seems to me that that struggle is happening again. Anyway. Uh, and Robin, mm -hmm. do you what it means the Pan-Africanism? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you? well, um, we, um, we are holding this meeting and we hope to have more uh, webinars in the springtime building up to the, the conference that's going to the it's a congress, not a conference, in, uh, in October in Togo, which is a very small country in Africa. And you might put the map up of Africa, the colored map of Africa, so we can see where, there it is. OK. Could, could you uh, point to where Togo is? Yeah, um, Jules. Jules. Um, Anyway, yeah. it's right next oh. to Ghana yeah. on the uh, on the coast there, Ibina. and um, apparently, and it's a country that has been run by one family for decades, oh. uh, as is true of many African countries, unfortunately. And uh, however, they persuaded the African Union, which is a organization of all the America, all the African states. Um, to bestow upon them the power to create this Ninth Congress and to develop the steps to make it a um, vital and important event. So uh, we were inspired in a way uh, by a, a, vi a visitor here to Burlington named Ganaka Legote, and we hope in, in our next meetings that he will be here with us, at least on Zoom, uh, because he is on the one of the developing committees that uh, will, will formulate this event. But um, before <clears throat> getting to that, I would like to explain my, uh, my interest in all this, and that is that my father is, was a journalist and interested in world affairs, but especially African affairs. And he founded a newsletter called Toward Freedom in 1952. And as time went on, that was an incredible time where there was hardly any interest or awareness in the United States as to what was happening in the developing world. And so um, as time went on, he decided to go to Africa, and he invited me to go with him. And I was just a kid, really. I mean, it was my first year in um, in college, in Antioch College. And at Antioch College, they say that if you you know it's a work study program. So they said, well, you will be you can go as secretary to your father to Africa. And there's a picture of me in Sudan. Uh, my father is giving the president a bound volume of Toward Freedom. And um, and it was quite, for me, a very mm. amazing uh, experience. We went down one side of Africa and up the other side. Uh, we were not allowed into South Africa because he was the editor of something called Toward Freedom. So they're not going to let a, a newsletter with that title into South Africa. So. We got to Rhodesia. I mean, all the countries at that time had different names because they were still not independent. I, I think the genius of my father was to decide to go to Africa at that time because it was just bursting out with uh, energy and independence and mainly to stop by. You could show the, the next map, please, the old map. Um, mm. about wow. what what Africa looked like at that time. For example, all the countries of that are called French West Africa um, uh, uh, were not yet formed yet, such as Niger, uh, Burkina Faso, and so on. You don't see Togo there at all. 
uh, Ghana is called the Gold Coast, and of course the Congo is called Belgium Congo. Wow. So th things were very different in those days, and, but it was, a, it was an exciting time to go there. And um, one of the highlights was that my father met uh, Kwame Nkrumah, who uh, at that very point in 1957, the fall of 1957, he was a prime minister, but elections were happening for the first time. There he is. <laughs> and Kruma? Good looking guy, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. um, and uh, um, so, uh, and he, he said actually, my, I, my country may be made uh, independent and I may become uh, the, the president, but until the whole continent is, uh, is independent, this won't really mean anything. We, in other words, he had a vision for a Pan-African, a strong Pan-African uh, movement. So uh, when Toward Freedom kind of transitioned from being a active website, we still do have a website, but there isn't much new stuff put, put on there because we don't have a, an editor. But we have a wonderful um, mm. booklet that tells everything about it. And if anyone wants to, um, let's see, where is it? Over there. Yeah. Wants to, uh, wants a copy of this, they should just uh, email me at robinloyd8 at gmail.com. Okay, thank yeah. you so much, Robin, <laughs> yeah. for, to share your own experience. Euh, si nous pouvons dire en français en résumé, ce que vous devez retenir, parce que c'est une session de, de formation. Euh, en français, d'abord, le panafricanisme, c'est à la fois une vision sociale, et économique, culturelle, politique d'émancipation des Africains. Et, mais aussi un mouvement qui vise à unifier les Africains du continent et de la diaspora africaine à une communauté africaine mondiale. Alors... Euh, pour euh, leur expérience, je vais dire en Lingala, donc panafricanisme, ils allaient au mouvement Moko, ils allaient s'occuper de la Macambo, il y a social, et économie, et puis culture, il y a un mot canyon sur l'Afrique, dans la politique, pe. pour nous faire ça, l'Afrique est une libosso, et il y a un bon mot, pour unifier en haut, et ça va au bas, au bas, basali qu'on vivre na libanda ya 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 continent na biso, na bo basali na mboka kuna bango nyonso, basala bo moko, ba koka, ko zala na makanisi moko po Afrika kende libosso. En Swahili, panafricanisme iko ni gundi moya yenye kusaili ya kuunganisha wale watu ba 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 toto bote basali ya Afrika benye biko inje benye biko e, inje ya inche ya ya, ya continent yetu na na benye biko kule pour que mawazo bote ba kwe pamoja isairie juu ya ekonomie juu ya maisha ya batu yendele mbele alo kuile ile tunasikia eh, robi na nasema mambo ya nini ya toed freedom ku kiswahili tunasema kuelekea uhuru en français c'est vers la liberté alors, en Lingala, et pas et pas à bon somi. Alors, à cela qui en Lingala, à cela qui expérience et à voyage, papa n'a pas qui journaliste, bah qui n'a qui n'a Ghana. Alors, bah pour n'a qui a a a a causé la secrétaire à papa n'a eh, parce qu'à l'époque là, en 1952, donc et, mouvement vraiment à panafricanisme, il et, et ça qui et ça qui vraiment ma casse na na niveau ya Afrique alors il y a kenda qui paye à ça qui wana ti to moni ndenge eh nini eh mi papa eh azawana to moni à côté à papa na eh ti na ndenge kwame kuma zo qui pouvoir à ça qui c'est que azan expérience à mingi a ebi makambo belé donc tu n'as toi mukusiki ya pa et nini histoire yake aliendaka ku Ghana na baba yake alikuwa ka e, mtu akupasha habari bali mchako lako akwe katibu ya baba yake ile sapa le e, gundi ile ilikuwa ka vraiment nguvu sana kuma pay Ghana Ethiopia na ba, ba leader bote alors alikuwa ka na ile experience 
na njo bali alikuwa anatumika kuile tunasema kuelekea uhuru toward freedom anasema deja experience yake pale e, tunasikia donc atutasema bitu yote gisi ana alitoka mkusema me tuko tuna explique kuba mamo yenye ko très facile pour que mo comprendre alors en français nous revenons le cœur de, de, de son principe consiste à la, à la certitude que le peuple d'Afrique et de la diaspora partagent une histoire et une destinée commune et que leur progrès social, économique, politique est lié à leur unité. Donc, Sandy Pia Nae Alisema a utilisé le terme et il a dit qu'on a colonisé l'Afrique. Maintenant, il faut que l'Afrique soit en train de se faire en train de se faire en train Njo alisema vila alingala donc sendi alobaki boye e, mouvement oyo ezali ko sali sa po ba ko ko décoloniser Afrique c'est-à-dire eh? ti lelo Afrique ezaka toujours na maboko ya ba bato bazana ma, makasi bazali ko bakangi Afrique na na, na maboko puke ba ke ndeli bosote alors e, mouvement oyo ezali ko sali sa e, ba ba bota minyonso ya Afrique oza na Amerika oza na Europe oza na wapi na bao bazali kuna po tozala bomoko alors eh, je vais leur demander le programme pour cette pour cette année concernant le panafricanisme donc ils vont répondre na tafuta kubauliza mtu na juu ya ma mipango yenye takuwa yenye kui mwaka en lingala na uzitu na bango eh, programme ya mbola yo OK so do you have any program for this year Um, regarding pan-Africanism? Well, at, uh, at the moment, not officially, but we're hoping to have uh, events like this right. um, f every month, perhaps, up until mm. the uh, Congress mm. takes place, and to uh, look uh, at other movements that are happening in, uh, in, the, in the USA and even maybe in Vermont, mm. because... Um, in trying to understand Pan-Africanism and its movement, I, I found that there are all sorts of groups. There is a group called Friends of the African Union. It seems to be a very, which is in the United States. It seems to, it is an economic, social, humanitarian, charitable, educational institution that is, seems to especially Uh, want to involve entrepreneurs and mm. people in the diaspora here to consider going back and bringing their wisdom that they gained here and going back there and starting businesses. So I'm wondering whether um, Dr. Uh, Jules has, uh, has ever heard of that organization, Friends of the African Union. It's in, um, in um, Philadelphia, I think. Okay. Um, but it might be something that some of your listeners would want to look into and form a committee here or something because it is supportive very much of this Pan-African initiative that's st starting next fall. Mm. Okay. Eh, ni kwa answali ni kwa namuliza ma, ma, ma programi ya mwaka hii. No, ki, kila mwezi kutakuwa, kutakuwa mafundisho tita tupeleka ku mwezi wa, wa kenda kule kutakuwa congrès ku Togo 9e congrès donc congrès ya kenda alors kila mwezi kutakuwa mafundisho hii kutakuwa ma seminar hii tatusaidia sana donc na tuna ke ba programme mbula oyo donc ba programme ezali ke chaque mois to bandoza la ba formation e, soit en ligne ou bien na ba émission boe pour que ça ça ba tuba ko ka koe ba nini le programme est comme ma bison na na 9e congrès au na Togo na mois d'octobre et puis alobi ezali na mouvement moko a mona ki ango ba ba benga ango ba 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 na ko ko ba 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 mi ya ya union africaine o ezali na Philadelphie o to to ko tape na site na totala Uh, donc, je crois bien, je, vous venez d'écouter le programme pour cette année. Donc, il y aura des sessions, des séminaires et chaque mois pour vous permettre d'entrer dans les bains en attendant le 9e co co congrès qui sera organisé au Togo. Et je crois bien qu'on aura la possibilité aussi et, de participer. 
Alors, parmi les, les, les pères fondateurs du panafricanisme, il y a aussi William Dubois, mm. que nous avions étudié en philosophie, tout ça. Alors, euh, euh, et Cindy va parler un tout petit peu de William Edouard Dubois et, et, et le panafricanisme. Donc, il y a Moulisa, Kuko, parmi Batoube Barunga, Barunda, et groupe, et Amérique, tout comme William Dubois. Njo e Sendi anatafuta ku, kusema mpe kiloko juu ya panafricanisme na William Dubois. En lingala, don, on a tout une question e concernant William Dubois parce qu'il y a za parmi ba père fondateur à panafricanisme à on a kati ya Amérique. Nde Sendi alingi a meke mpe ku explike biso. <laughs> W.E.B. Du Bois is a very important American historian, black American historian. He is, was a sociologist. Mm -hmm. he, was one, he was one of the first uh, entrants or students mm -hmm. at Harvard University, the first black student mm -hmm. who graduated from Harvard. He also attended Fisk University in the South. He came out of a period of history that was deeply uh, Jim Crow. Um, and I did want to mention a little bit about him. He was the author of a very important book called Black Reconstruction in the uh, United States. Reconstruction was the period of time right after the Civil War when uh, this country tried to reform itself, mm -hmm. passed constitutional amendments. Number one, the 13th Amendment to eliminate slavery. Number four, the 14th Amendment to make all black people who had been formerly slaves citizens of the United States and so forth. Those two, the 13th and 14th, and then the 15th Amendment gave black men the right to vote. So W.E.B. Du Bois t uh, wrote a whole book on that period of time from a black point of view. More important to our discussion today, however, he became part of the uh, Pan-African movement in about 1900 and attended the first uh, Pan-African conference, which was in London. And then he con continued to go to those conferences. I believe at that time that W.E.B. Du Bois was participating in those conferences and congresses, as you mentioned that this one is called mm -hmm. the Cong Congress. Mm -hmm. At that time, there were Pan-African conferences. I believe that at that time, to me, it was very curious that it was at the same time that Africa was being colonized by the white European powers, France and England and Belgium. So he was, I believe, trying to have a Pan-African movement which would resist that colonization, all of Africa, not one nation versus another, but the Pan-African movement was an attempt in his mind to, and also everybody's mind at the time, to resist that colonization. It's the same movement, I believe, that's going on today. Anyway. Ok, avant de terminer notre émission, parce que nous tendons vers la fin, je vais résumer un peu si William Edouard Dubois, qui est un écrivain, un des écrivains penseurs africains, et le premier euh, universitaire afro-américain à l'université de Harvard, comme elle venait de dire. Il était le plus influent au XXe siècle. Il est aussi l'un des précurseurs du mouvement panafricain. Et aux États-Unis, comme en Afrique subsaharienne, de nombreux écrits lui ont été consacrés. À titre d'exemple, au cours de la décennie 90-2000, des dizaines de communications ont porté sur cet écrivain à Brazzaville, Congo et à Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso, à Nairobi aussi. Oops. Alors, parmi ces mots-clés, et en anglais d'abord keyword pour uh, William Dubois uh, panafricanisme United, United States afrocentrisme african nationalisme donc oui. uh, parmi ces, ces mots clés pour William Dubois et c'est le panafricanisme les États-Unis l'afrocentrisme l'Afrique et puis les nationalismes alors uh, last question oui. what means uh, decolonization to, to make african countries, African people, independent of the control of the white European, I'm I mean, we're I have to use this, these language, which um, I could describe further, but the capital, the richer nations, the richer white nations, in their attempt to control the African countries between 1878 and even presently to extract the resources from those countries and make those resources profitable to France, England, Belgium. Mm -hmm. So it's an attempt to free those countries and those people mm -hmm. from that kind of uh, exploitation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. 
And so uh, when I went with, uh, with my father, uh, that was the time of uh, political independence for African states. But we found that many of them were still tied mm -hmm. to the colonial powers for economic reasons. And that's why this, uh, uh, I think this Congress is important. And it's also important to know that the United Nations has uh, developed a, um, it's a, f a forum for the, um, uh, for Pan-Africanism, which is called uh, the movement, now let me see, what is that called? Um, uh, the United Nations, um, the, permanent forum of people of African descent. I mean, this was a whole decade, and it started in 2015 to 2024, so it's meant to end. However, and our organization, um, Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, has been very involved in becoming aware that this whole decade is due to end at the end of this year, right when so many things are starting to happen. And so there's been an effort to make it a permanent forum of people of Africa descent at the United Nations. And that was voted on and passed uh, in 2021. So uh, be aware of all these yes. incredible organizations going on and, uh, and watch for us when we come on this show again. Okay, so last question. Small question. Have you been in Africa? Uh, I have, yeah. but North Africa. North, okay. I've been in uh, Algeria and Morocco. Okay. I know you have been in yeah. Ghana. Uh, okay. Yeah, and I went back in, 19, in uh, 2001, actually, to the big conference in Durban, South Africa, on, uh, uh, on um, uh, you know, on... The, um, on slavery, the history of slavery and discrimination. It was a big United Nations conference, and uh, I came back on a very significant date, which was um, September 11th. Our plane flew in early in the morning, luckily, so we got here before um, the Twin Towers had fallen. Uh, but. What I feel was very sad was that all that went on at the Durban conference, a very important conference, was forgotten for a decade or so. Now people are starting to be aware of it again, um, but the, because terrorism and uh, the 9-11 be, took, took over everyone's psychology and our government as well. So we're hoping for a reunion, a re-entrance in, yeah. uh, in all of this. Ok, nous sommes arrivés à la fin de notre émission d'aujourd'hui. Tout comme une asuka émission à bisou à l'élo, tout naïcha émission à yétou à l'éo. En tout cas, mon on a ba ma ma pa, vu qu'on a dit donné n'gou vous sana, vu qu'on a piganisha, du yaku seiria, Afrika yendele kumbele. Tuna omba na wale ubatu bote biko wanaishi mu Amerika, ku Europe, ufazi yote. Batu yote bakuwe umoja, baibu biko ku diaspora, ifo kurudiaka, jia kuenda kusairia Afrika yende kumbele. Doto silisi emisiona biso ya lelo msusu kuya eh, prochainement. Don, nous sommes arrivé à la fin de notre émission. On va dire merci à nos invités eh, eh, spécial, Robin Lloyd et Sandy Bird, eh, pour oh, cette opportunité de nous donner et parler sur le thème le plus, plus important sur le panafricanisme. Et donc, il ne faut pas que nous puissions oublier nos origines. Alors, nous disons euh, thank you, thank you so much. En français, merci beaucoup en Swahili, Aksanti et en Lingala, Maton Domingi. Allez, à la prochaine. À la prochaine. Merci. Bye bye. <rire> okay.